guys, welcome to another episode of Outside the Lanes. Today, our special guest is Rick Danison. He is the strength director of strength and conditioning at Indiana University. Um, I've been working with Rick for like four and a half years now. He works with track and field, and um, as an athlete, I know the benefits of strength and conditioning and how much it has helped my own performance. So. We thought today we'd get to know Rick a little better and kind of dive into his training philosophy. Um, sound good? Sounds good. All right. So first, maybe could you tell us, like, how did you end up at IU? When did you become a Hoosier? What was the path to get here like? Path to get here, let's see. It's kind of been everywhere. I was a human pinball for a little while. Um, let's see. I, I played football for 17 years. I ended up at Iowa University where I played to start coaching there um, for two years. I was assistant linebackers coach. Okay. Assistant strength coach my first year. The second year became co-coordinator. Um, got an opportunity to go to a high university. Okay. I was there about you know year and three quarters, something like that. Worked with track, um, wrestling, football, basically anything under the roof. Um, got a call, got an opportunity to go to the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, was there for two seasons leading up to their 2009 AFC North Championship. Worked at uh, some private sector in the off season when I was with the Bengals at uh, Ignition, doing combine prep. Uh, basically got a call to come out here, and uh, this will be my sixth season coming up. Awesome. Yeah. So what's the difference um, in working with pro athletes and college athletes? Um, what I like about it is still genuine. You know, okay. The development I, I get out of 17, 18 year olds all the way until 22, 23 years old. Uh -huh. It's amazing. You know, using yourself as an example, the way you look and perform right now, it's not even close to the way you, know, you performed when you first started out. Yeah. You know. So, can you talk a little bit about that transition from high school to college and how do you kind of help those high school athletes transition into lifting the college environment? You know, with you guys, at least I have time. Okay. But, uh, you know, there'll be six weeks where our freshmen hardly lift any weight. Um, it's all instructional. It's all technique. You know, with different clean variations, snatch variations, the way to squat, um, body positioning, you know, all things of that nature. So, you know, how you transition is you take it slow, um, and you just kind of force, you know, technique is everything. Okay. Now, with track and field, you work with a bunch of different events. You have the multi-event athletes, pole vaults, sprints, jumps, distance. Mm -hmm. How does the training vary, and how do you manage those differences? So many athletes. Yeah. It's, how does that work? It's pretty crazy. I mean, you got essentially six different teams in one as far as, far as how you group them up and uh, how you train them. So, you know, I enjoy it. It was, it was a great challenge at first. Yeah. Um, uh, come up with different variations of training. Basically... Um, I try to not so much choose track specific exercises. I try to, you know, kind of change the variables a little bit as far as volume certain times of year. Like, you know, this time of year we're hitting, you know, basically on our compound moves are squats and benches. You know, we're hitting five reps and below, things like that because we've reinforced technique. We've got a good base, mm -hmm. um, a little higher rippage things. And uh, by this time of year, I'm trying to continue to get you strong, but at the same time, with those lower volumes, um, there's a lot less risk of injury. Yes. You know, so we kind of do it like that. Um, pole vault changes, trains a little different than sprints and jumps. Sprints and jumps train a lot different than the distance kids. So, you know, there's a little variations in exercise, but basically, you know, it's almost certain port, you know, times of the year I became a DJ. You gotcha. know, turn the volume up a yep. little bit, turn the volume down a little bit. Um, Speaking of volume, yeah. how do you get the athletes pumped in here every morning at 7 o'clock? Well, turn up the volume? <laughs> yeah, basically, when I leave my truck at uh, 5 a.m., I'm slugging down you know, 40 ounces of coffee, excited for the day. Um, you know, with me, I love what I do. <laughs> It's pretty easy to be excited, you know, about about the day. Um, you know, enthusiasm is affection. You know, so uh, yeah. one of the things I pride myself on is I don't have a bad day. You yeah. know, we'll listen to music. You know, I usually give you guys a choice. Yeah. Uh, depending on who's in here, you know, and uh, I always pick country. Yeah. You know, music's good, but the big thing is, you know, as a strength coach. 
it's not much different than being a salesman or a, a businessman. Um, if you don't believe in a product that you're producing or trying to get out there, it's going to be glaringly apparent to the athlete. Mm -hmm. I know what we do works. It's a good system. Um, we got a lot of success with it, so you know, I never have any doubts. Yeah. Well, I'm with you on that yeah. because I know that this has helped me out a lot. So with all the athletes, I know you have some interns that come yeah. in here and help you out. Um, what does it mean to you to be able to kind of invest in them and teach them about the process of lifting and how do they help you and how do you help them? Oh, How's that relationship uh, work? It's great. I mean, as a, you know, kind of a veteran now, I think this will be my ninth, tenth season coaching. You know, I was that guy once. Mm -hmm. You know, I was the hungry young strength coach trying to look, at, you know, looking to get into business. And we get guys and, and ladies in here that come in and they're hungry for the same. I have worked, you know, everywhere from small school to uh, mid major. Um, we got 25,000 square feet of workable, usable space. This is one of the largest in the country. You know, as an athlete or former athletes, I don't have any toys that I don't want. You know what I mean? Everything we have in here is available for our athletes. We use it if it has value, which is everything in here. Um, so, you know, basically being able to come in here and uh, live, you know, I do have a home, but uh, I basically live here, you know, it, it makes it awesome. You know, it's a place that athletes can come in and uh, really enjoy, you know, what they're doing and where they're at. Mm -hmm. You know, working in here is a privilege. You know, not necessarily a right. Okay, so last question here. If you're not on the sidelines of the football field in your safari hat, I mm -hmm. like to call it, yeah. or if you're not in the weight room, yeah. which is like, I don't know, probably a limited amount of time, but um, what are you doing? What does Rick Danison do? What are your hobbies outside of lifting? Uh, or where would, where do you invest your time? Do you think? Well, you know, basically my, my home is a vacation home. Okay. <laughs> I spend so little time in my own home, so when I get a chance to get out of here, you know, I'm here 5.30 in the morning to about 6.30 at night, you know, so I get a chance to get out of here, you're going to find me in my house. Yeah. You know, and I'm not a guy that can sit down a lot, so I'm always finding a project to do, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm on, you know, building a fence, you know, building a big ball fence. Nice. Hauling gravel and spreading around. I mean, I'm always fine. Just can't get enough lifting those heavy objects. I, I think those are all the questions we have. And thanks so much for the interview. And it's awesome. It's been so fun to work with you. Yeah. yeah. Sad it's going to come to an end soon, but we got another five months to just pound it out. So. Yep. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Rick Dannison. Uh, thanks for watching today. The past is the past, you know? It's a new day, bro. My day. You gotta do it now.